ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರು ನೀಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ actually this is an opportunity for me to associate with and have the darsha the audience of the supreme personality of lord god and lord krishna and to associate with his great devotees because even though there are many great persons in the universe and some of their names have been mentioned here such as the four kumaras who are brilliant like the sun wherever they go their effulgence is so great that they light up the place they go to Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, these are tremendously powerful personalities. Lord Brahma is the creator of the universe, like an engineer, he organizes everything in its tremendous complexity, which even our great scientists of the modern age, they're studying, but they can hardly begin to understand. So how much intelligent is Lord Brahma that he organizes everything so nicely under the direction of Lord Krishna. Lord Shiva is also... He's known as Ishva, Mahadev. He is considered by his followers to be the Supreme Person himself. And from a less informed point of view, that would appear to be so, because he is so much powerful that the superintendent of the material energy, Durga, is his wife, and she's always submissive to him and under his control. So that is one of his great glories. He destroys the universe he oversees the superintendent of the material energy and even though he has all opulence at his command even though he's such a greatly powerful person he has no motive to enjoy it he's the most renounced person he simply sits under a tree so that's an even greater glory of his that he's so much renounced which is quite contradictory to the great powerful so-called controllers of this material world who try to take power so they can enjoy life and they have bigger states and harems and so many to big treasuries and they like to show off their wealth but Lord Shiva is so much renounced that even though he's so powerful he simply sits under a tree and meditates on sankarsha so so many great great personalities came of course shortly after that the great kings of the earth would be fighting to show off their power this is another display of the power of maya that even though they had had the great kings of the earth they were called to the rajasuya sacrifice having been dominated by maharaj yudhishthir and his brothers they agreed to participate as subordinate vassal kings to maharaj yudhishthir so they came and even though they saw great great demigods who were far far superior to them still by the power of maya that ishvara bhav that feeling that i am a great controller the feeling that is inherent in the nature of a kshatriya when the time came for the battle of kurukshetra they also felt now i will show you how great i am you'll see in mahabharat is described that that they will be boasting among the kshatriyas don't think that you are dealing with any small time local king i am not and they will give a list of names of people who they think inferior to them i am karna and he also finished not very easily so everyone likes to show their greatness and the demigods also they have a motive to they also like to feel they're great that's why they're not in the spiritual world they're servants of krishna but they're in the material world because they're serving krishna but they also have some motive to propagate their greatness and to show their dominating spirit and to feel and very important they are sakam bhaktas they have some material motivation therefore they're serving krishna very faithfully but they're in this material world So they all came together at this great Rajasuya sacrifice which goes down in history as the opportunity to establish who is actually the greatest person because this question is going on since time immemorial even great sages may be bewildered as to who is the greatest person we see that even the four kumaras were present once in a great assembly and many learned people were present and they were bewildered as to who is actually the greatest person they were thinking maybe it's brahma maybe shiva or maybe vishnu so they sent bhrigu muni to find out you go and apply your testing process find out who is the greatest person so he found out by not exactly by testing the power because from our vision 
from our point of view, the power of, from our point of view within this material universe, the power of the three controllers, they may, they may seem to be equal. Brahma creates, Vishnu maintains, and Shiva destroys. So it appears from our angle of vision that they may be equal. Or it's very difficult to ascertain who is the greatest. Uh, and in the Vedic literature is also the great mm, praise is given also to Brahma and to Shiva as much as Lord Vishnu practically in some parts of the Vedic literature. So some places it may appear to be even more. So even great demigods may be bewildered as to understanding who is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is actually Supreme. So this Rajasurya sacrifice uh, it provided a great opportunity to find out who is the greatest person, especially because it is a function in the Vedic sacrifice, that in such a sacrifice, to elect, to establish who is the person to be honored first. Everyone is to be honored, but who is the most honorable person should be the most superior person, who, who is the superior above all others. So in the assembly of great personalities, who is going to be selected among them as the greatest personality? Now this, in two ways it can be understood, that surely the greatest person will come out of this, because one thing is that all the great personalities are present. So whoever is selected as the greatest must be the greatest of the greatest. And also because the opinion of the great personalities themselves will be given there personally, that they will be giving their opinion. They are personally present, and in their presence they are all discussing, and they will find out who is the greatest person. So there was much discussion. There was discussion of the qualities, it was, must have been a very nice discussion, discussing the qualities of so many great persons. Here are the four Kumaras, here is Lord Brahma, here is Lord Shiva, here is Indra, here is Bhishma Dev, here is Vyasa Dev. There are so many great persons. Then who actually is the greatest? And there was different people who were thinking or saying, well, maybe this person is the greatest, maybe that. They were putting forward the qualities of great, of great personalities there. And eventually it came to Sahadev, the youngest of the Pandavas, to stand up and say what almost everybody in the assembly finally wanted to hear, which they all knew was correct, but as a as a matter of principle in bringing, in electing the greatest person, then first of all the qualities of all the persons should be stated. And then when the greatest person, his qualities are stated, it is seen that even in the assembly of great persons, his qualities are even greater than others. They far outshine the others. So that is a process of finding out the greatest person. The first you will praise everyone. Oh, he is so wonderful. He has so many good qualities. Then he also, you see, he also has so many. And now, Krishna is being described, that he has qualities which far surpass all those of all the great demigods put together. In fact, even the qualities of the demigods, they're only reflecting or derived from those of the original source of all qualities, namely Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Sahadev stood up and he declared this, that here is the cause of all causes, here is the shelter of all good qualities, describing his great qualities. So even though he is the greatest of all great persons, he has, out of his, in, another of his inconceivable qualities, that he has appeared among us as an ordinary person. Uh, he is as a subordinate king to Maharaj Yudhishthira. And the most wonderful thing is that he took the duty of receiving the guests as they arrived in the arena of the Rajasuri sacrifice and was personally washing their feet. So this is the greatest of all persons. In acknowledgement, yes, here is that greatest of all persons. He should be honored first. So when the ding, 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 all the sounds died down, one lone voice in the huge assembly rang out in protest. Shishupal, who was expert in blaspheming Krishna because he'd been practicing all his life. Since, since the very beginning, he was... Uh, blaspheming Krishna, his very first words. Most, usually the parents, his father's name is Damago, so usually the parents, they're waiting, what will be the first words of the child? 
So Shishupa, they were waiting when he was a young baby, Shishupa, cousin of Krishna. So you know, they were waiting to see, what will he say? Gugu, Mama, Papa. Shishupa, first words, I hate Krishna. Yes. <laughs> from the very beginning. And he was worthy to be killed from the very beginning, but his mother, who happened to be Krishna's aunt, took a benediction from Krishna. Please let him live. How can he live? He's always blaspheming. He should be, he deserves to be killed. All right, a hundred times he can blaspheme him. I'll let it go, I'll tolerate it. Then one more time, off with his head. So this happened to be the hundred and first time. And what a, what a place. Here he had an audience. His conceit, his arrogance, his defiance was unlimited. That even in the assembly of so many great people who are far greater than him in so many ways, he'd already been humiliated and insulted so many ways by Krishna. Like so many other demons, he was expert at bragging. But when it came to practical action, he was always shown to be inferior to Krishna. He, could, he was desiring to marry, he was set up to marry Rukmini, but Krishna very easily, just like this, took away Rukmini from under his nose to, uh, and he couldn't do anything about it. He was simply bragging, but he couldn't do anything. He was shown to be just like a worm in the presence of Krishna. But still he was puffed up, thinking himself very great. He always uh, harbored deep enmity for Krishna. And now he found, now is the opportunity in the assembly of all these people. Now I will proclaim, proclaim the truth which I have understood and which all these foolish Brahma, Indra, Shiva, Bhishma, Vyasadeva, they don't know, but I know what is actually the truth. And he stood up and said, that you are all mistaken. I'm very surprised to see that even though there are many great demigods and acharyas and brahmins and learned people, they've all made a big mistake. But never mind, I'm here. I will tell you what is the actual fact. That this Krishna is not at all the truth. How can you believe that such a person is great when actually he's, he's just the son of a cowherd man? Do you know he spent his childhood running around chasing cows and playing with cowherd women? He's not in the slightest bit aristocratic. And then he went and now he says he's the son of Devaki and Vasudev. We don't even know his caste, whether he's cowherd, Vaishya, whether he's a Kshatriya. Probably he's just some kind of complete outcast who's, who's posing as a highly aristocratic person. He calls himself the king of Dwaraka. But what is, what is his qualification? He is so scared of that Jarasandha that he ran off into the sea and built himself a fort. He's just a complete coward. He's a weakling, he has no good qualifications, and you're all praising him. So, meantime, the, uh, there was Kshatriyas, the demigods, they're mostly Kshatriyas. Plus, anyway, there was going on since, for a long time, enmity between the devotees and the demons. So devotees were there, Bhishma was there, Bhima was there, Arjuna was there, all the Pandavas were there, and especially Bhima, he had a short temper. He didn't like anyone saying anything against Krishna. No devotee likes to hear anything said about Krishna. That's why sometimes people, they wonder, why do we call Mayavadis and atheists demons, rascals, nonsense, fools, kick them in the face? Why? Because we can't tolerate that these rascals are speaking against Krishna. Why should we tolerate? If we're, if we're also Mayavadis, then we'll tolerate but if we are actually devotees of Krishna, then we can't tolerate. So Bhima was just standing there, he was just ready. To, he was just about to jump on Shishupal and show what a good club fighter he was, using Shishupal as an exhibit, for getting smashed into the ground. And uh, other Pandavas and so many kings were there, and Shishupal also had his supporters. But Krishna didn't want a big fight at this time. He wanted let all the kings with all their followers come together. We'll do it at Kuru. What we have to do, we'll do it at Kurukshetra. So just to save any blood being spilled in the Rajasuya sacrifice, which would cause the impurity and would impede the performance of the sacrifice. So Krishna didn't want a big fight. There are so many different reasons. So anyway, boom. So Darshan Chakra offered this end. And in such a way that no blood spilled. No one else could do that. That was Krishna just showing that, well, here's just another little proof. I am God after all. So, Shishupal, he was dead, 
and the light from his body, the Atma Jyoti, the light from of the spirit soul who is who is inhabiting the body of Shishupa that entered into the body of Krishna in the presence of everyone, giving more proof that he is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this is the story of how Shishupal came to understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The atheists, they also find out, although they deny it, up to the last moment, they deny that Krishna is God. But ultimately, they also have to accept that Krishna is God, or at least that there is God, because they are under the control of the laws of God. For the atheist, God comes in the form of death. Mrityu sarva harascharaham. He takes away everything. Their prestige, their pride, their money, their position. Everything they're so proud of and attached to. I am Shishupa. This is my kingdom. These are my arms. Look at them. This, I'm so great. People worship me. I'm so wonderful. Everything is taken away. So, the absolute truth, no one can avoid because we all have an intimate relationship with the Absolute Truth. But better to be a devotee of Krishna. We cannot overcome Krishna, nor will we ever be happy in the attempt to do so. A materialistic person means he is trying to enjoy separately from Krishna, but he can never be happy in his doing so. And in his attempt to do so, he must always deny or try to circumvent the Supreme Absolute Truth, Krishna. We can never, ever, ever be happy until we simply accept the simple fact which all the great personalities of the universe accept that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I am not supreme. I am not even slightly supreme. I am a servant of Krishna. So if we accept that, we will always be happy. And as long as we don't accept that, even though we may be dressed as devotees, even though we may be going on with a life of devotional service, unless and until we fully accept that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I am simply meant to serve Him through the agency of His devotees. Until we come to this point, there is no question, there is no question of happiness, there is no question of perfection, there is no question of achieving the Supreme Goal of Life. So there are two kinds of people. Dhobhuta uh, Sarga Loke Smin Daiva Asur Devacha Vishnu Bhakta Smita Daiva Asurya Stadviparyaya There are two kinds of people. There are devotees and there are demons. Devotee, what is his qualification? He simply accepts Krishna is supreme. And what is the qualification of the demon? He simply rejects his, that Krishna is supreme. Opposite mentality. Viparita Buddhi that is described also by the personified Vedas. Is it by the personified Vedas? They say, Bhayam Dutiya Vinivesha Dasya. No, it's not. It's by Neva Yoga. It's Bhayam Dutiya Vinivesha Dasya. Ishad Petasya Viparya Yosmati. Everyone is the servant of Krishna. Uh, but when we become inimical towards Krishna, then we take on the opposite kind of intelligence, thinking that I am not subordinate to Krishna. If there is any Krishna at all, he must be subordinate to me. That is the thought of Shishupa. Then you enter the world of fear. Everyone is very afraid in this material world because they are not surrendered to Krishna. When one surrenders to Krishna, then he becomes free from all fear, free from all anxiety. He enters into the life of actual happiness. He develops all good qualities. Therefore, Krishna consciousness is all auspicious. Vaishagni Shubhada is... Rupa Goswami has analyzed. Even in the very beginning stages of devotional service, if one seriously takes to Krishna consciousness, then all miseries are destroyed and all auspiciousness begins. This is being described in Srimad Bhagavatam, giving relevant information as to the greatness of Krishna, the greatness of his devotees, the greatness of devotional service, and the miserable, condemned condition of the demons. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Not a question, but a comment. At the solar eclipse, when Krishna and all of the other uh, personalities have gone to Guru Chetra to make uh, the eclipse, Krishna met with his father, 
Chaitanya, one devotee called Bhagavan Acharya, he was lame. So, Bhaktisthan Sosar Thakka was asked about this. He said he's always, in every pastime, every time Lord Chaitanya comes, he comes and he's like that. That is his eternal form. So, a pure devotee, he's not suffering from past karma, but he may appear to be like a Especially in Lord Chaitanya's Lila, he may appear to be like an ordinary person. Gorky Shaudas Babaji Maharaj was blind. So there may be different reasons for that. One reason is uh, that he may be taking the karmic reaction of disciples. Another reason, he, the devotee shows that even in the midst of apparent difficulties which would uh, depress a materialist, he remains always happy remembering Krishna. Another point he, sh he shows in his life that even in spite of all material difficulties uh, it's possible to remember Krishna. That, that is not impeded by any material circumstances. This uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat, Vrindavan Dashtako comments, Jato Daiko Vaishnava Bebohar Duk Nishchoi Jane Hoteho Parananda Sukh He said that if you see a devotee he appears to be unhappy or in difficulty, you should know that actually that's not any unhappiness for him, but he's always experiencing the highest transcendental bliss. Shri which is an authorized scripture, explicitly states that no Shiva is a supreme personality. Lord Shiva is stated to be the supreme in the Shiva Puran. So, what's the question? Why is there a contradiction? Yes. Not in other places in the Vedic literature, others as others are described as supreme also. So therefore we have to come to the ultimate conclusion that Srimad Bhagavatam this is a long discussion. That Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that yo yo yang yang tanang bhakta shata ya chata mit chati hmm, what is that? yang yang tam tam tasya 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 chalam shadha that I if someone wants to worship a different demigod I give Krishna is the super soul and everyone's out so he gives them that achala shadha that immovable faith that this person is supreme Tatsya Tatsya Achala Shatha. I give them. I'm forgetting the last line also. Tameva Vedidham Yaham. I give them that intelligence. Because they want that. So, the, similarly, the Vedic literature is for people at different stages. They, different people are said to be supreme. Because that may be good for them at a certain stage. Therefore, the Vedic literatures have to, have to be understood through Acharyas, who give the conclusion of the Vedic literatures. Now, one thing is that that is accepted by all followers of the Vedic literature, that Bhagavad Gita, that is the essence. And Bhagavad Gita is very clearly established that Krishna is supreme. 
Again we see Bhagavad Puran, which is the compiled by Vyasadeva in its maturity, which is therefore considered as the topmost evidential scripture, the topmost evidence. And that very clearly establishes Krishna as supreme. An example is given that as long as one's living in the village, he may think that the Sarpanch, you know this word Sarpanch? Yeah. He may think that the Sarpanch is the supreme person. It's, as long as his consciousness is confined to village consciousness, then if he goes to the town, he sees the mayor of the district or whatever it may be, or the he may see the DC of police, district commission. So he may think that the DC is this, then his consciousness expands to district consciousness. So he thinks that he's the supreme person. Then when he becomes aware of the state, then he thinks that the chief minister of the state is supreme. Then when he becomes conscious of the whole country, then he may think that the president of the country is supreme. Then when he becomes conscious of demigods, he may think that Lord Shiva is supreme. So actually, and then when he becomes conscious of Krishna, then he becomes Krishna conscious and goes back to God level. So, uh, as long as you're at the Sarpanch level, uh, there it's announced, Sarpanch is supreme. He is supreme within a limited circle. DC is supreme within a limited circle, which is greater than the village circle. But when you come to full consciousness of the absolute truth, surpassing even the boundaries of this universe, then you come to understand that Krishna is the supreme. Hmm. There's no difference. Seva Mukhe He Jiva Do. Beginning with the tongue. So first you chant Hare Krishna. That's the beginning of devotional life. But then there are so many other things too. What's the problem to understand? Because you're not saying on book, you can't understand that. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki.